In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of you who are a little bit in between, welcome back to the Hamlet. Triumphant, our party returns with heavy coffers. But the strain remains. Yes, the stresses of battle have already infected Twangafar the most. The party struggles, but they could stand to see another day. While we were gone, several new things have opened, or rather a couple of new things have opened. That being the Abbey and the Tavern. Both serve the same function, but are not exactly copies of each other. There are a set of things that we can use here. For example, let's enter the Abbey. The cobwebs have been dusted, the pews set straight. The Abbey calls to the faithful. Here, we have several options. Here, the Cloister, Transept, and Penance Hall. Each are used for the same purpose. They heal our characters of stress, and depending on their quirks, they may be confined to only being able to use one of them. However, this brings us into another mechanic of the game. The Caretaker. Peace's acceptance, we're whatever else he says. We all but playthings of the gods. Oh, that's a very nice thing to say, Caretaker. He randomly forces himself into whatever slot he absolutely feels like, it be the tavern or the abbey, and makes it impossible for certain members to heal, depending on their, the nature of their quirks. Can be frustrating, but with further upgrades we can unlock extra slots. However, slightly more annoying is that he takes up the cloister, which is the cheapest place in the abbey. Not great, but I won't hold it against him. Sometimes you gotta make a little extra coin, you know, make some of your coins go a little extra distance. And furthermore... Eggs, cards, and curtained rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. And here we're at the tavern where a burly man wiping a mug greets us with sorrowful eyes. Hospitality, this man was not trained in. Relief from the outside world he was. His hairy arms clutching at the, uh, at the handle of the mug, he welcomes us in. With the offer of a bar, gambling hall, or a brothel, should that be where your tastes lie? Again, not much else to explain here. For the time being, we'll decide on what we need to do after we return to the stagecoach. If you remember in the last episode, we upgraded it so that we could have more heroes. And we are greeted by a plethora of awful choices. Oh my god, this is the worst turnout I've ever seen. Oh my god. This is despicable. I'll explain exactly why. Abominations are special units that are different from others. They are tortured beings who have the miraculous ability to transform into horrible otherworldly things. But as a result, they are seen as the most unholy of all of the party members, even more so than the famed occultist. So much so that holy members such as the Crusader, Clerm, the, um, sorry, the... Vestal, and also the Leper, will refuse to participate in any party that the Abomination is currently residing in, for it basically conflicts with their faith. The Abomination is great power at a cost. When you transform, it inflicts much stress damage to not only the character, but to everyone else who is part who is participating with him. This puts us in a bit of an awkward situation for the time being. And honestly, I have no real interest in using abominations too frequently. 
For the time being, for the sake of merely keeping them for lack of better options later, we will be throwing them into our party. And reclusive. This man is more dangerous than he seems. But more usefully, we have the Bounty Hunter. With the Bounty Hunter, he specializes in marking targets and striking them for extreme damage. Very effective against the manners of humans and those alike. With the power of uppercuts to knock back and stun, and flashbangs to stun even further. Unfortunately, he is also blessed with the power of, um... The skills I pretty much most... Well, these two, they're okay. Uh, yeah, okay. They're just okay. I'm not a fan. But he could be useful and will be joining us in our next journey. The thrill of the hunt. The promise of payment. We will be naming this particular hero. Let's have a look at my list here. We will name you... Duang. Duang is a bit of an odd character. He seems to be quite twitchy and evasive. He seems to uh, not like questions very much as to why he happens to cover his face with such feverish need. Perhaps it's because of a defect such as a lazy eye. But he seems knowledgeable around the parts. He's been here for some time. A useful addition to our team. And for the time being, there's little else we can do but embark on another journey. For the time being, we will actually return back and uh, place Twangafar into a method of healing. Has a very deep need for brothels, and who are we to stand in the way of someone in their feverish need to get the sex on? In the meantime, we will also increase the stress recovery by spending... ...dalliance await those who cross the threshold with coin in hand. We will spend some uh, uh, tokens to increase the stress recovery, but no more. For the paintings will have a useful effect once a different building opens up. Trying for 1,500 coins, you know, you made yourself very useful. Rest well. Your corrosion will be missed. And in his place, her place rather, should be doing. Hunting party, they are known as. We also receive this move stone, which gives an extra chance for move skills, which could be relatively useful for the bounty hunter, but for the minus one speed, I'm not particularly interested. We have a selection of uh, missions to take on in the ruins, which could be very useful and also benefit us greatly in the way that it, you know, the rewards and the cash we receive. And by looking upon them, I see... Unfortunately, it seems as though the rewards aren't exactly thrilling. However, this could be very nice. The Bloody Herb, five deeds, and a stack of 4,500 gold. Whereas the Book of Relaxation is nice, the Minus Dodge, pfft, we don't have any time for that. Maybe in the future, but not now. As you can see, firewood has been added to our party, and this is where camping skills come into effect. As we come to rest, I'll explain them then. The shopkeeper, or who seems to be the caretaker in tow, taps his fingers together with mild interest as to our next purchase. The coin is perhaps the only reason why he really stays here, if not for the unending madness. For medium journeys, I generally like to bring about 18 food. Because we're bringing a level zero party member, I'm going to chuck on a couple extras with three shovels. As we're entering the ruins, bandages will be um, desired aplenty, along with three keys. Perhaps a couple holy waters. I'll keep one anti-venom, just in case. Could prove beneficial. And let us stop messing around and get into the good shit. What you like to see. Pace out the halls of your lineage once familiar. Now, Oren. Veteracy in our party leads us to make a healthy assumption that we should scout ahead. Moving onwards, we find, well, whatever lies ahead. And in hindsight, I found 
that yes, the party generally acts a little bit better. Or, well, rather, Du Wang acts better within the second position, as all of his skills are accessible from there. However, and it looks like Dolan can actually perform better from the third position, so this will be our new formation. I will also be changing your colours to represent your veterancy. And let us proceed. The darkness holds much worse than mere trickery. And we snuff out the torch and move on. The twitchiness in Duang only seems to grow even worse. As Stan reaches into a box and pulls out coin and heirlooms. brave and the foolhardy alike. He begins to contemplate taking them for his own, but the, with the rest of the party closely at watch, he decides it's better not to provoke them. He's already tested his luck too much at this point. Familiar with the traps, Dolan makes quick work of it. No dangers luck ahead so far, but ahead in the corridor, we hear a shuffle. We grip our weapons ever tighter. Now it must be carried home. To no surprise, they turn around, seeking our blood. Dolan takes the first shot by raising his pistol and shooting for the courtier, who deftly dodges with his small stature, driving insanity into Gus and Gregai. Perhaps the veterancy was no small shield for helping us. We need to protect Good and Greg Guy as much as we can, for they've given they've been given little reprieve. In these events, we decide to raise up our uh, our flashbangs and strike for those that would otherwise do us harm to mitigate the damage. And with a deft dodge, Stan of Stone steps back, seeing the blades fly past his armor, grinning beneath his dark helm. Gooden Gregai takes offense to the uh, to the insanities brought upon their minds, with their darkest fears becoming realized, and calls upon the gods to protect them. To be fair, Claymores didn't need much uh, exaggeration or explanation. They generally do a fine job telling the story for themselves. Unfortunately, with the flashbang used, stun resistance overcomes the brawler. The same trick will not work twice. However, for his brother in arms, the same cannot be said. It looks like Du Wang's twitchiness is proving advantageous. How could one hate such a affable, strangely masked man? Gone, or the power of the holy man in the back? In an attempt to quickly finish this battle, we slice for the jugular, missing only to strike at their shoulder. Blood spurts. Not fatal, but it could add up in time. With a zealous accusation, we stand to strike heavy. And I decide to take that risk with our holy book. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. In the face of true justice, one crumbles. And where one might stand, well, we decide axes might best succeed. Shovels, gems, not quite uh, the treasures of the gods, but we'll accept it for now. The caretaker did tell us to not be too picky, though he did say that behind stifled laughter. laughter. What awaits us? A big fat sack of nothing. Except spiders and maggots and all those creepy crawlies. Unfortunately, we failed to strike one down and... Actually, no, 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 no. Don't listen to me. 
What has Badger ever known, honestly? And in time, we decide to strike the maggot with a flashbang, for they are known to stun with their putrid acid. And it seems as though insects have not much care for the gods. And we have not much care for them. And they don't have much care for my claymore either. How disappointing. Back to the pit. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. There was probably a reason why society has not use insects in the front lines of defending their fortresses. The party quickly returns to formation and continues onward, pushing behind the door as they step further into darkness, hoping nothing awaits them. Successfully, nothing does. A holy statue waits for us, and with that we sprinkle some holy water to curry favor from the gods. With 30% extra damage, Stan stands ready, his muscles bulking by the divine order of those above. Unfortunately, we had to eat five food as I realized that Gooden Greg guy is a stress eater, and we're quickly paying the price. Not sure what we'll do about that, but we'll have to find out soon before we run out of supplies. The spiders scuttle along the floor, spitting webs from every direction, striking down Dolan, holding him in place. The other spiders seek this as opportunity, whereas my pistol says otherwise. Noxious acid corrodes at our armor. But Dolan's cloth doesn't fare much better. They seek to take much advantage of this and strike him down to death's door. In this event, I should mention, in Darkest Dungeon, zero HP is not the end. Zero HP is death's door, but if we do not act quickly, it could very well spell the end for all of them. So we must strike and strike before death knocks on their door forever. However, with such actions, we do not stand to live much longer. We tend to his wound swiftly, but under present conditions, I don't know how effective it will be. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. We drink the anti-venom that we brought on the off chance. <sighs> that 150 gold pieces well spent. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. With the numbers swiftly dwindled, Do uh, uh, Dolan is looking better by the minute. But I can't say that hastily. Taking a deep breath, the party takes a moment to uh, bring themselves together. A dangerous effort by such small creatures. <sighs> the resistance to the toxins of this dungeon has proven quite useful in the event of traps. And Stan's kleptomania kicks in, stealing from us much-needed food and gems. However, the party's back was turned by a sudden collapse of a bookshelf in the background. They didn't notice it this time. The party seems ill-favorable. We throw a desperate flashbang into the back to attempt to shuffle the party and protect our minds from any undue stress. But it can only do so much with but a single flashbang.
It appears we can only do so much with our pistol. Another one falls. But I've known not to be always correct. Don't tell your mother. Stan staggers backwards as the blade sinks into his flesh past the corroded armor. Taking advantage of this, the brawler strikes next, driving Stan to his knees. He digs his claymore into the ground, hoping to prop himself up. And with any hope, perhaps he'll survive this. But choices have to be made to see how we can effectively take down the enemy before they erode what's first, our minds or our armor. Being the front runner, we can't leave him for much longer and see to his wounds. Stan's dear dizziness causes him to miss for the skeleton. Despite his hatred of the unholy, he can only do so much to steady shaking hands. The puller, the bullets are still so unrefined. However, with a swift pull, Dolan is brought to the fray. He takes a strike, but stands. How much longer, we cannot be sure. Throwing a flashbang into the party to a certain, though to make certain of Dolan's protection, we need to make sure that he will survive. For his veterancy will see us long into the future. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Dolan sputters, coughing through a scarf. Blood flecks the blue tints. Flipping his dagger's blade, he drives it into the skeleton, failing to finish it. But it rattles, his arm falling from his meager husk. As blades fly past the skeleton, straight into Stan's chest. However, he resists any harmful effects. The best we could do is mitigate the damage. And tend to our party's wounds equally. Precision and power. The divine favor of the gods is granted upon us quickly. They will see our holy order and protect us with their divine might. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Ah, a secret door has presented itself to us. However, we will leave that for next episode. We're already some ways in. I think this is a very nice place to camp. What's in the sarcophagus, you ask? Or whatever chest it is? I have to wait. For it's time for us to rest. The battle may yet be won. We consume heartily at our food, looking to recover our health and stress. In favor of a better journey next time. In the time of our rest, we have a certain amount of respite to ensure that the enemy doesn't come, uh, come upon us too quickly. And in this time, we are granted abilities, camping abilities, that each individual member has. You can have up to four abilities for each party member. However, each member only starts with three. They can reduce stress, buff, and also protect us from nighttime ambushes, which could be very beneficial in the future. So we will spend our first four time on bandit sense. It will also decrease the chance that we will be surprised and increase the chance that we surprise others. With my ear to the road, none shall surprise us, says Dolan. And so we assess our party's needs. However, the ability to Recover does not seem, unfortunately, very well within our grasp. Dolan is the only one that is able to heal our party's wounds. We take two time to heal Stan's bleeding, gushing wounds from the uh, toxicified armor. 
We could also take the time to clean our guns to make sure they are more effective for the next four combats. And whether tracking stacks with the ability of uh, clean guns is unknown, so we'll be not taking that chance in favor of not wasting any of our precious time. Stan seeks to encourage Good and Gregai. For their actions while stressed has not proven beneficial to us. And standing tall, he seeks to improve the condition of Dolan. Removing his mortality effects. For when they enter Death's Door, they generally are granted very negative situations, such as reduced accuracy and damage, I believe. I probably should have checked, but Badger can't always be perfect. Feeling much stronger than before, the party continues on. But more on that next time. I'll see you then, Badger Battalion, In to see if we survive.